In 1955, Pontiac began to transition from the stereotypical old man's car into something more youthful. And in this particular model year, the Pontiac lineup was all new for customers. In fact, Pontiac proclaimed in 1955 that everything on these cars was new, but its wonderful name. And even though these Pontiacs shared roof lines with their siblings on the General Motors A bodies, the Chevrolets, Pontiac designers ensured that these particular Pontiacs definitely looked different from their siblings. In particular, designers gave the cars flashy two-tone paint jobs as well as totally new sheet metal below the belt line that gave Pontiac its unique character. And many of the Pontiacs of this era had the twin so-called silver streaks topping various elements of the design, giving it a unique flair. However, when it comes to making a pivot into the more youthful markets, one element is certainly key, as much as it is today as it was back then, and that is performance. And for 1955, Pontiac did indeed up its game in terms of what was under hood. While the 1954 models utilized an inline straight eight-cylinder engine that displaced 268 cubic inches and made 127 horsepower and 234 pound-feet of torque, the 1955 models saw Pontiac introducing an all-new overhead valve V8 engine that didn't have all that much more displacement than the flathead straight eight-cylinder it replaced. In particular, this new V8 displaced 287 cubic inches compared to the flathead straight eight's 268 cubic inches, but it did make one heck of a lot more horsepower and torque too. Horsepower went from 127 to 180, and torque went from 234 pound-feet to 264 pound-feet. It was enough to endow the new 1955 Pontiacs with a totally new level of spunk. And for the time, they were, well, let's say relatively quick. Zero to 60 was in the 13 to 14 second range for the big Pontiacs. And while that doesn't sound like it's overly fast by today's standards, it was certainly much more sprightly than the 1954 models. It took about 17 to 18 seconds to go from zero to 60. Top speed, of course, also improved to over 100 miles an hour in a number of instances. It's perhaps because of this entirely new level of performance that many attribute that 1955 287-cubic-inch V8 to be Pontiac's first V8 that was introduced to the public. Interestingly, though, that's not the case if you go back in Pontiac and, let's say, Oakland history. Let's examine a little bit about what was actually the first so-called Pontiac V8, how it differed from this V8 introduced in 1955, and why it didn't last very long. Now, in order to understand why Pontiac introduced a V8 back in 1930 and what it was attempting to do with it, you have to look back to the motor division's history, back when it was part of Oakland division of General Motors. Oakland had been part of the GM family since 1909, but unfortunately, it never really sold well as a division, often averaging about 30 to 40,000 units per year, at least in the first half of the 1920s. Even in Oakland's best year, 1926, Buick was outselling it by about five to one. It just wasn't very popular with customers. Because of its lackluster sales, Oakland Division decided to introduce Pontiac as a lower-priced companion car, kind of like the LaSalle was to Cadillac, and importantly, the strategy worked. By 1928, Oakland Division, which comprised Oakland and Pontiac vehicles, was selling about 250 cars per year and was now outselling Buick. Of course, it really wasn't Oakland that was driving the sales success at this time. It was Pontiac that accounted for it about 80% of Oakland Division's overall volume. In addition to introducing Pontiac as a companion car, one of the things that Oakland tried to do in order to juice the sales of its car and provide some spark was introduce a new 85 horsepower V8 engine in 1930. They advertised it as the lowest price V8 offered to the American public, and it enabled their vehicles to top 70 miles an hour when it came to speed. And while that certainly doesn't sound very fast by today's standards, remember, this is 1930. Topping 70 miles per hour was quite a feat for vehicles. Unfortunately, the V8 really didn't provide the spark to Oakland sales that the division was hoping for, 
and the mark was eventually sunset. Its V8, though, did live on for a brief time period in 1932, and by brief I mean about three months. Production was stopped at the end of March in 1932 of the senior Pontiac V8-equipped vehicles. Only about 6,300 units were produced during that time period. And while the first-generation Pontiac V8 was relatively short-lived, it actually was pretty technologically advanced for the time. Today, many different engines are over-square, or in other words, they have bores that are greater than their stroke, but that was pretty rare for the time period. This V8 had a bore of 3.44 inches and a stroke of 3.38 inches and displaced 251 cubic inches. And as I said, having an over-square design back then was pretty rare and something that wasn't pretty common on vehicles. An even crazier detail about this engine is that it actually had a flat plane crank where all four throws were in a single plane instead of being at right angles to one another, which was common practice at the time and common practice for a number of years to come. Interestingly, this flat plane crank wasn't done for high performance as it is today. It was really done for cost, as it was thought that production of a flat plane crank was going to be cheaper than a typical crankshaft, where the throws were at right angles to one another. Of course, one of the things that this endowed Pontiac's V8 with was engine vibration, something that today is pretty easily quelled in flat plane crank engines, but you can imagine the technology to do so back then didn't readily exist. As a result, Pontiac had to put super, super soft engine mounts in their vehicles, and they also included laminated spring supports in the front. These spring supports were designed to let the engine shake around but isolate the engine from the chassis so that vibration didn't make it into the engine compartment. The system by and large worked, but it did have one problem. That was at idle and just off of idle. It allowed the engine to shake around quite a bit. And if a driver really pushed the accelerator quite hard, the engine could torque pretty significantly within the engine compartment. So Pontiac had to endow it with a unique stabilization system that enabled an opposing force to be placed on the engine when it would move in the other direction. Despite all these different efforts that Pontiac went through to quell the vibrations and make this V8 a great offering for its customers, you can imagine it simply didn't match the smoothness of other V8s that were offered by its competitors. And it also couldn't compete with performance or price compared to them either. It was for these reasons as well as cost that Pontiac decided to transition to a straight eight engine for 1933. Recall that straight eight engines only have one cylinder head and one exhaust manifold, as opposed to V engines that have two of both. Nonetheless, the 1932 Pontiac V8 that was introduced actually by the Oakland division for 1930 represents a forgotten and unique element of Pontiac history. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on what was really Pontiac's first V8. And if you did, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.